Troy McClure. You see me in such fine quality. Epic AP environmental science educational videos such as gross primary productivity, net primary productivity, and respiration. What's the connection? Part two. And there's math and AP environmental science. Part four. Okay. Let's go over some parts of the uh, summer work here, okay? I want to go and work out a few of the uh, problems to go help people understand uh, what we, what is needed here, okay? So one of the things that we look at here is looking at a percent change. And the formula, and you're gonna have to know that formula, is the new minus the original, take the absolute value bars, divided by the original, times 100. So let's go ahead and let's do a quick example here. Okay, I'm going to change the numbers here. So let's say if I scored a 1500 on my first PSAT and a 1600 on my second PSAT, what is my percent improvement? Well, I have the new and I have the original. So 1600 minus 1500 divided by, in this case the original, 1500. And we multiply the whole thing times 100 because that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to give us our percent. If you don't multiply this by 100, all you're going to get is a decimal or, depending on your calculator, a fraction. That's not going to help out very well. So let's go take a quick look at this. Okay, so 1600 minus 1500 by minus 1500 is 100 divided by 1500 equals times 100 equals, and I got to rounding 6.67%. Okay, that's how you do this. Now let's take a look at this one here in the next one. If a termite can destroy 1.2 milligrams of wood per day, how many kilograms of wood can 10 termites destroy in a week? Oh, let's be fun with it. Let's go with 40 uh, termites destroy in a week. Okay, well first off, we have one termite taking out that much milligrams of wood. Now, you gotta go from milligrams to kilograms, okay? And that's gonna be a very, very small number. Okay, so let's look at this here. Um, I've got 40 termites, okay? I got 40 termites, all right? And I know that each termite, I know that each termite is gonna do 1.2 milligrams of damage to, for one termite, okay? I'm just setting up the uh, label, factor label thing here, okay? Now in that process, I need to change the milligrams into kilograms. Now, I know that there is one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams, okay? I know that. And I'm also looking at, as I go through and continue here with this, I know that one kilogram is 1,000 grams. Now, let's check this out and make sure that my units are working. Uh, my termites cancel out, right? Because anything over itself is one. Milligrams cancel out. Okay, because again, anything over itself is one. Grams nicely cancel out. So that's gonna kinda make it easy for us. Now we can punch this into the calculator. So with that, guys, we can go and say, as I clear this calculator here, I have 40 times 1.2 equals, that's 48, okay, that's nice. I got 48 divided by, well, I've got one million. How do I know that? Well, it's one times one, and count the number of zeros, so it's 48 over one million. This is going to be a small number, but you also have to remember you're changing this into kilograms. It'll be a very small number. So with that, 
divided by 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 equals, and that means I have, for my final answer, and I'm going to write it up here, 0 0.000048 kilograms. Now, we can change this to scientific notation while we're at it. How do we do that? Well, this is going to be a small number. And we can go, and when you take something and put it in scientific notation, ladies and gentlemen, we can take this and say, all right, we're going to put the decimal over here, 4.8, because that's the right way to do it. Now, you notice it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimal places to the left. So it's going to be 4.8 times 10 to the minus fifth kilograms. Now, both these answers you are seeing here are exactly the same. This is just a little bit easier to write. This is the scientific notation that they are talking about. If, on the other hand, it was 48 million kilograms, you're going to go the opposite way. It'll be 4.8 times 10 to the whatever here, to the sixth, I think but it's a positive number. So when you see a negative number like this, that means it's going to be a very small number. The decimal is going to the left. If it's a positive number, that decimal is going to go to the right. Okay, let's move on. So when we look here at percentages, okay, uh, what's 70% of 640? I'm bored. Why don't we go with 61% of 420? Let's go with that. Okay, we're gonna still, I'm still teaching you the same basic concepts here. Okay, so with that, well, let's see, what can we do here? Well, one of the things I know that I can change this to a decimal. In fact, that would be a pretty good idea. You should be able to change a percent to a decimal, okay? Because really a percent, it is a fraction. And if you're saying, well, I don't know how to change this to a fraction. Really, 61% means 61 over 100. That is the fractional equivalent of 61%. So whenever you see a percent, put that number over 100 and there's your fraction. Boom, how's that? Okay, 61% of 420. So I'm going to change that to a decimal. So I'm going to say 0 0.61. Okay, this is a handy thing. If you see 72%, it's 0.72. If you see 52%, it's 0.52. If you see 7%, it's 0.07. Okay, times 420. So what you're getting when you multiply like this, you're getting a fraction, okay? You're, you, you are, you're getting a part of this. You're getting 61 hundredths, 61 one hundredths of 420 or 61% of 420. So 0.61 times 420 and I walk away with 256.2. That's equal to 61% of 420. And 20. That's it. Okay. So what happens? Well, let's see if we can come up with another thing here. I gotta check my I gotta check my timing here because I don't have a clock. I'm doing great. Okay. Now for these, I would suggest you can check out my video on dimensionalysis. Okay, and that would work. I already talked to you guys a little bit about scientific notation. Yes, they can sometimes give you a number like this. They see 394 billion. Okay, so you're going to have to know how many zeros there are in the billion. Okay. Now, here, complete the following calculations. You could enter that into the calculator since you guys are allowed to use a calculator. Um, I'm not that uh, interested. Here, I want to look here at this one here. So I have got 14%. Okay, that's fine. Let's say 25% of a 42,000 acre forest is destroyed by the invasive pine weevil. 
How many acres of the forest was not destroyed? Okay, this is not too bad because they're at, they're 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 sitting there. They're not. How do I say it? It's a long day. What can I say? It's kind of getting late, but I'm here. All right, so 25% of 42,000, that's telling us how many acres are destroyed. Okay? That's just telling us what's destroyed. So in this case, you know the answer is less than 42,000. So we're going to go and say 42,000. And remember, we can change this to a decimal very easily. It's 0.25. Or you could look at that as a quarter of 42,000. So let's see, 42, 1, 2, 3 times 0.25 equals, and I got 10,500 acres destroyed. Okay? Now the problem, look at what the problem is asking. It says, how many acres of the forest were not destroyed? Okay. So that means you take the total acreage of 42,000 and take away 10,500. Okay? And that will leave you with 31,500 acres that have not been destroyed. How many acres of the forest were destroyed? We already figured it out. That's 10,500 acres were destroyed. So we answered those two questions using this uh, system. Okay. okay. Let's try again. All right. Okay. So here, a pesticide was sprayed on a portion of forest. The pesticide killed 25,000 termites. That's 71% of the local termite population. And they are now asking you, what is the total termite population? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say 42,000 termites. And we set the pesticide, so let's make it 65% of the local termite population. What is the total termite population? This is a little bit different because now you've got how many termites are dead and they're telling you, look, 42,000 is 65% of this bigger number population. How do you fix that? Okay, well, we can go ahead and say, all right, uh, I have 42,000. I know I can't multiply this by 0.65 because I'm asking what's 65% of 42,000. That's not it. So if we can't multiply it, we can't add it, and we can't subtract it, that means, guys, we have to divide it. Because that's how we're going to find out what the original number was. Okay? So we're going to divide it. Let's do this. 42, 1, 2, 3, divide it by 0.65 equals, and I walk away with 64,615.38 acres. I mean, not acres. Uh, we're going to round down here to 64,615 termite population. That's the total termite population. 42,000 happens to be 65% of that termite population. So if you want to know what the original number was, they're giving you, this is we wiped out 65% of the population, which was 42,000. What was the original population? You're going to take that, divide it by 0.65, and that's going to give you your original number, which is about 64,000. So when they're asking about the total population of something, that number is going to be bigger than what you originally have here that was wiped out. Okay. I didn't do number 16 because you can go back and look at the uh, percent formula change here. Okay. Looking at uh, dependent and independent variables on this, I'm going to let you guys uh, work on that. Okay. When we look at the average temperature for the experiment, okay, let, let's look. 
Uh, I'm going to make a quick chart here. Uh, let's see, at 35, 25, 30, and 32. So I'm going to show you how to do an average here. So I've got four, four numbers. Okay, 5 and 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12, 1 and 3 is 4, and 2 is 6, and 3 is 9, and 3 is 12. So I'm adding those up, okay? So I have my total. Now, here's the thing. We're looking at the average. So when we look at the average, you've got to look at the total value divided by how many data points did you get or how many temperatures are there. In this case, there's four, right? So 122 divided by 4. 4 by 3 is 12, and we have a 0 and a decimal here because we know that it's going to be that leftover, so we're going to bring down the number here. We know that it's a 0 uh, in our, well, here, let me show you the division before that. Okay, so you know that, so, it's, so you know you have 2 left over, so you know that you have Going stupid on me. Okay, hang on a second. Let's close this. Okay, let's try that. So now, this is what we have, right? And then we'll bring this down here, and we'll bring this down. So you know this is going to be a zero, right? Because it won't fit into there. But this 20 will, because we'll bring that in. So we know that's going to be a decimal, right? So that's 4 times 5 is 20. So our average, ladies and gentlemen, is 30.5. That's how you take an average of something, okay? That's how you take the average of something. Now, when you look at the optimum best temperature for clam development, again, you're gonna compare what temperatures there are and the number of developing clams. The bigger the number, the more of a jackpot that you get. Okay, line graphs, okay? And that was basically, I had that done I had you guys do that before. A lot of people seem to forget. A lot of people seem to forget these little pieces of information here. Okay? You always need a title. Okay? So you always have something. Okay, I'm making fun here. Canoe's awesomeness versus time. Okay, so we put, we label here, and I may misspell it, awesomeness, and we're going to put that in cool units. Okay, and then on the bottom here, we're going to look at time. So what happened here, I have a title. That's what I mean by title of the x axis and the y axis. My title here is awesomeness. My title on the x axis, okay, is the time. That's the title. Now, what about the units? Well, in the units here, this is cool units. Over here, I'm gonna go ahead and say milliseconds. Okay, so we have milliseconds. So now I have labeled, I have a title for the graph, Check. I have a title of the x axis, y axis. Check. And I have the units for the x and y axis. Check. Now, when you guys are doing a graph, ladies and gentlemen, I got to pay attention. I am running out of time here. When you run, when remember, when you guys are doing the graph, you need to maximize. If you have a graph that's like this, look at all this space that's not being used. Use it. Okay. Expand it out. Okay. When you have a graph that looks like this, this is much better. Ding! That's better. This is okay. That's the right way to do a graph. And I'm Biff Turkleman, and you're not. Actually, I'm not Biff Turkleman. I'm Troy McClure. Catch you on the flip side.